This is Hero from Navigational Interpretation and Analysis of Neural Nuclear Imaging. I'm you, an assistant. Neural Nuclear Medicine Imaging in Epilepsy will be presented. Brain perfusion and metabolism in the epileptic focus will be described. In the interictal phase, brain perfusion and metabolism are decreased in and around the epileptic focus. During seizures, brain perfusion and metabolism increase in the epileptic focus, followed by an increase in the surrounding area. After the seizure, brain perfusion and metabolism decrease from around the epileptic focus. In the interictal phase, neuronuclear imaging has a high ability to detect epileptic focus in temporal lobe epilepsy, while it does not have a high ability in extratemporal lobe epilepsy. Glucose metabolism PET has a higher detection ability than SPECT. During seizures, neuronuclear imaging has high detection ability in both temporal and extratemporal lobe epilepsy. During seizures, brain perfusion SPECT with 99M technetium ECD or HMPAO is particularly useful. One of the reasons why PET has better detection of epileptic focus in the interictal phase than SPECT is their higher spatial resolution. Let's compare the resolution in a case of neuronal migration disorder, band heterotopia. Fluorodeoxyglucose PET shows that glucose metabolism in the band heterotopia is higher than that in the overlaying cerebral cortex, but in SPECT, the accumulation of the heterotopia and that in the cerebral cortex are integrated and cannot be distinguished. PET of glucose metabolism in the interictal phase can provide useful information for epileptic focus resection. In this case, MRI shows a small cystic lesion in the left supplementary motor area, and glucose metabolism PET shows hypometabolism around the lesion, which is more evident on fused MRI and PET images. Epileptic seizures resolved after the resection including the lesion. Postoperative pathology showed evidence of encephalitis. Brain perfusion spect of the same patient during the interictal phase, showing a slight decrease in perfusion around a small cystic lesion on MRI, but less clear than PET due to the low spatial resolution. This is a case of laughter attack. No obvious abnormality was seen on MRI. The PET scan of glucose metabolism showed a decreased area in the right medial frontal lobe, and the seizures resolved after focus resection. Pathology showed focal cortical dysplasia, and glucose metabolism PET is useful in cases where MRI does not show any findings. Changes in brain perfusion before and after seizures in temporal lobe epilepsy are shown in the figure. During the interictal phase, there is a decrease in brain perfusion around the epileptic focus. During seizure, blood flow increases in a wide area including the epileptic focus. After the seizure, brain perfusion decreases around the epileptic focus, and then decreases are seen in the focus as well. This figure shows brain perfusion spect during interictal and ictal phases in right temporal lobe epilepsy. During the interictal phase, there is a decrease in perfusion from the right medial temporal area to the temporal pole and lateral temporal area. During ictal phase, there is an increase in perfusion in the same areas. In right temporal lobe epilepsy, PET images of brain perfusion with O15 carbon dioxide inhalation showed increased perfusion in the right hyocampal region which may be due to seizure evoked by hyperventilation. During the interictal phase, FDG PET shows a wide area of hypometabolism in the right temporal lobe. In most cases of temporal lobe epilepsy, the MRI findings of hyocampal sclerosis, that is, hyocampal atrophy and high signal on T2 weighted or flare images, coincide with the lateralization of decreased perfusion. However, in this case, the hyocampal sclerosis was seen on the right side, while the decreased perfusion was seen in the left temporal lobe. In this case, the right hippocampus has already lost its epileptogenicity, indicating that the focus has shifted to the left hippocampus. Thus, nuclear brain imaging is useful in confirming the laterality of the temporal lobe epileptic FOC. Brain perfusion spect during interictal and ictal phases was obtained in a patient with frontal lobe epilepsy who did not show any findings on MRI. In this case, coarse motor movements of the arms and legs were observed during seizures and cytogenic non-epileptic seizures were suspected. During the seizure, there is increased perfusion in the left frontal lobe and left basal ganglia. During the interictal phase, there was a mild decrease in perfusion in the same area, confirming real epileptic seizures. 
This is a case of frontal lobe epilepsy without any findings on MRI. After an intravenous route of administration had been secured, 99M technium ECD was injected as soon as the seizure started. 99M technetium ECD is rapidly metabolized from lyopapilic to hydrophilic in the blood and brain. The hydrophilic metabolite cannot pass through the blood-brain barrier, so the perfusion in the brain at the time of administration can be maintained for a long time. This property makes it possible to capture the brain perfusion state during epileptic seizures by imaging after the seizures have subsided. The obtained images show many areas of increased perfusion in the rig. Reading brain images in temporal lobe epilepsy requires an understanding of neural networks. For example, in papers' circuit, which is known as a memory circuit, the hippocampus is connected to the mammillary body via fornix, to the anterior thalamic nucleus via the mammillothalamic tract, to the cingulate gyrus via the thalamocortical tract, to the parahocampal gyrus via the cingulum, and from the parahocampal gyrus to the subiculum of the hippocampus. Neurodegeneration in temporal lobe epilepsy via the papers' circuit can be seen on MRI. T2 weighted images show the right hyocampal sclerosis and high intensity the right anterior thalamic nucleus. There is also atrophy of the right mammillary body. In right temporal lobe epilepsy, decreased perfusion in the right thalamus is seen on brain perfusion spect due to deafferentation through the papers circuit. In right temporal lobe epilepsy, FDG PET shows decreased glucose metabolism in the right thalamus due to deafferentation through the papers circuit. This is a case of frontal lobe epilepsy, without any abnormalities seen on MRI. In the interictal phase, there is a broad decrease in perfusion from the left frontal lobe to the temporoparietal lobe. A few minutes after the seizure, there was a wide area of hypoperfusion in the left frontal lobe. In this case, brain perfusion during the seizure could not be captured because of the delay in the injection of brain perfusion tracer. Focal cortical dysplasia is a common cause of epilepsy. Focal cortical dysplasia can be divided into three types. Focal cortical dysplasia type 1 is a malformation presenting with abnormal cortical layering either compromising radial migration and maturation of neurons, FCD type 1A, or the six-layered tangential composition of the neocortex, FCD type 1B. The combination of both variants will be classified as FCD typic. Focal cortical dysplasia type 2 is a malformation presenting with disrupted cortical lamination and specific cytologic abnormalities, which differentiates FCD type 2 or dysma. A case of focal cortical dysplasia type 1 is shown, which is difficult to be detected on MRI. FDG PET shows a hypometabolic area in the posterior part of the right temporal lobe, which coincides with the localization of spike sources on magnetoencephalography. A case of localized cortical hypertension type 2A is shown. This is a two-month-old boy who is in the process of myelination in the brain. The T2-weighted image shows an indistinct appearance of cortical ribbon from the right temporal lobe to the occipital lobe. FDG PET shows widespread hypometabolism in the same area. A case of focal cortical dysplasia type 3A is shown. In addition to the left hyocampal sclerosis in the flare, there is a high signal indicating focal cortical dysplasia in the left temporal pole. FDG PET shows widespread hypometabolism from the left medial temporal lobe to the temporal base and lateral temporal cortex. This is a quiz case. FDG PET during the interictal phase in a patient with epilepsy. In which areas is their hypometabolism indicative of epileptic focus? Pay attention to the difference between the left and right accumulations, and think for 10 seconds. Statistical image analysis is useful in such difficult-to-read cases. Individual brain images are fit to a standard brain template by linear and nonlinear transformations. This is called anatomic standardization. Further smoothing is performed and statistically compared voxel by voxel with the mean and standard deviation images of a large number of similarly processed normal database images. The resulting Z scores are color mapped and superimposed on the MRI of a standard brain. This makes it possible to automatically detect areas of abnormal perfusion or metabolism. Here are the results of the statistical image analysis of the previous quiz case. 
The statistically dominant hypometabolic area is shown as a color map in the right superior temporal gyrus, and a slight high signal is seen in the hypometabolic area on the MRI flare image. Focal resection was performed and postoperative pathology confirmed focal cortical dysplasia. Subtraction ictal spect co-registered to MRI, in abbreviation SISCOM, is a useful imaging method for detecting epileptic foci on brain perfusion spect brain perfusion spect during the interictal phase and during the ictal phase are superimposed on the MRI of the same patient. After normalizing the spect counts, a difference image is created by subtracting the spect image of the interictal phase from that of the ictal phase. Furthermore, a standard deviation image is created from the difference image. In this standard deviation image, regions above the threshold are extracted and superimposed O. Let's take a look at a case where SISCOM can be useful. This is a case of right temporal lobe epilepsy. The right temporal lobe, which shows decreased perfusion during interictal phase, while shows increased perfusion during seizures. Here are the results of the SISCOM processing in this case. By superimposing the T1-weighted image, the anatomical location of the increased perfusion can be determined. This SISCOM can be found in several image analysis software packages. It is also available as a standalone free software. This free software can automatically process SISCOM by importing MRI, intrictal, and ictal spect. Let's take a look at more cases where SISCOM has been useful. This is a 9-year-old boy with supplementary motor area seizures, and the MRI showed no abnormalities. Ictal spect showed increased perfusion in the left supplementary motor area. FDG PET showed mild hypometabolism in a large area of the left frontal lobe. SISCOM shows increased perfusion localized to the left supplementary motor area. Epilepsy focal resection of this area was performed and the seizures resolved. Pathological findings confirmed focal cortical dysplasia. SISCOM analysis usually aims to detect increased perfusion in the epileptic focus during seizures. However, if the seizures are short, the brain may already be in a postictal phase when the brain perfusion tracer reaches the brain. In this case, the perfusion in the epileptic focus may be lower than in the interictal phase. In this case of epilepsy with complex partial seizures, the MRI flare shows a high signal bordering the slightly thickened left insular cortex. Focal cortical dysplasia in the left insular cortex is suspected. FDG PET does not show any abnormalities. Brain perfusion spect images of interictal and ictal phases are compared side by side, but it is difficult to detect the epileptic focus. In the SISCOM analysis, Subtraction of the spect image of the ictal phase from that of the interictal phase shows decreased perfusion in the ictal phase in the left insular cortex adjacent to the high signal area seen in the MRI. Thus, SISCOM analysis shows that evaluating not only the increase in perfusion in the epileptic focus during seizures but also the decrease in perfusion is useful for focus detection. A multicenter study was conducted to evaluate the usefulness of SISCOM in epilepsy focal resection. In this study, Odds ratios were determined for the four modalities shown in the table to determine the extent to which they affect favorable seizure outcomes after epilepsy focal resection. It was reported that the results of SISCOM analysis had the greatest impact on favorable postoperative outcomes compared to MRI and ictal scalp electroencephalogram, and side-by-side -side comparison of intrictal and ictal spect images. Let's take a closer look at a case where SISCOM was useful in epilepsy focal resection. In this case, it is not clear where the focus is located when the brain perfusion spect during ictal and intrictal phases are shown side by side. The SISCOM showed a statistically significant area of increased perfusion during seizures in the left frontal lobe. Resection of this area resulted in a favorable outcome. As a result of SISCOM analysis, multiple regions of increased perfusion for the epileptic focus may be detected. In such cases, we can narrow down the candidates for the epileptic focus by increasing the threshold of the Z-score, which indicates statistical significance. This is a surgical case of left frontal lobe epilepsy. The pathology confirmed focal cortical dysplasia, type 1. There is increased perfusion in the left frontal lobe during seizures which is clearly detected by SISCOM. This is a postoperative case of left occipital lobe epilepsy. Pathology confirmed focal cortical dysplasia, type 2A. 
After surgery, recurrent epileptic seizures were observed, and SISCOM analysis was performed. Increased perfusion was found in the left medial parietal lobe, which is distant from the surgical site. SISCOM can be useful for focus detection in such recurrent cases. In addition to brain perfusion spect and glucose metabolism PET, neuroreceptor imaging can be used to detect epileptic focus with reduced central type benzodiazepine receptors using carbon-11 flumasnil PET or iodide-123 iomasnil spect. The area of receptor reduction is narrower than the area of decreased perfusion and metabolism in the epileptic focus, and it is said that the location of the focal area can be determined more accurately. It is also reported to be better at detecting focus than brain perfusion spect in the interictal phase. This is an image of iodide 123 iomasnal spect in a case of left temporal lobe epilepsy. This image was taken three hours after administration. Central type benzodiazepine receptors are located in the cerebral cortex and the molecular layer of cerebellar cortex. Statistical comparison with the normal database shows a decrease in receptors in the left medial temporal area. This is an epilepsy case of complex partial seizure with enlargement of the left amygdala. In this case of iodide-123 iomasnal spect, there is a decrease in accumulation in the left medial temporal area. When statistically compared to the normal database, there is a decrease in receptors from the left medial and basal temporal areas. Patients with temporal lobe epilepsy due to enlarged amygdala are older than those with hyocampal sclerosis. They respond well to anti-epileptic drugs and do not often lead to focal resection. Background pathology includes focal cortical dysplasia, low-grade brain tumors and autoimmune encephalitis. The lesions may extend to the temporal pole, and such cases are refractory. Carbon-11 methylene PET has been reported to be useful in detecting brain tumors in the background pathology of enlarged amygdala. If methylene PET shows accumulation, there is a high possibility of neoplastic lesions. An overview of the usefulness of nuclear brain scans in epilepsy was presented. The main purpose of neuronuclear imaging is to detect epileptic focus. Glucose metabolism PET is useful in the interictal phase. During ictal phase, brain perfusion spect is useful, and the focus detection rate can be increased by SISCOM analysis in combination with the interictal spect. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please use the description.